Hi, I'm Semben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Spy Simulation of Ferrite Core Losses Under Non-Sinusoidal Excitation. This presentation is actually based on a paper that is to be published at the IEEE Transaction on Power Electronics by Dr. Abramovich and myself. One way to estimate the ferrite core loss is by reconstructing the history of this loop. The area of this loop is proportional to energy and then times frequency is actually the power consumed. p spice has a built-in ability to run a hysteresis loop of a ferromagnetic material. However, this model, which is based on the Gilles Etherton model, has very many parameters that are frequency and temperature dependent. And unfortunately, these parameters are unavailable for all commercial cores. They are available for only certain selection of cores. And the worst thing is that this method for estimating the power loss has actually never been tested rigorously. That is to run simulation of many cores and compare the result, the power loss, to other methods, which we have a lot of data of. The method used by power electronics engineers is based on the Steinmetz equation. This is the template of this Steinmetz equation. And what it is, is a constant times frequency to the power of alpha in magnetic flux density. This is the peak value of magnetic flux density to the power of beta. Now, alpha, beta, and k are the constant of the Steinmetz equation. And they are actually fitted uh, to data measured by manufacturer. Now, this information is now given as tables or in many cases as charts of this nature. Here we see the peak value of the magnetic flux density in millitesla. We have here the power per volume. This is the kilowatt per meter cube. This is like millivolt to centimeter cube. And this is the power will be consumed. This is the power density in a core of this type at 100 centigrade. And this is now given for different frequency. Now, the reason why these, these are straight lines is because this is the power equation and this is a log-log chart. So in a log-log chart, a power equation uh, will ex exhibit itself as a straight line. So this is like frequencies. This is this value here. So the advantage of the Steinmetz equation is that it has rather few parameters and that it is available for all commercial cores, that is, all vendors are actually providing this information. Unfortunately, these constants are uh, temperature and frequency dependent, but this information is also provided by most uh, manufacturers. The downside of this approach up to now is that you have to do manual calculation, that is, you have to take the equation, you have to look for the constant and do the calculation, or to look up charts of this nature, uh, or go to uh, calculators that vendors are offering online to actually get this information. So you cannot use it within a SPICE or a simulation environment. It is important to point out, though, that this equation is correct only if the magnetic flux density has no DC value. This is the pure AC component. So this is just for AC excitation around zero DC. Now, in reality, of course, inductors may carry current. So therefore, there will be a DC component of the magnetic flux density. So this equation is incorrect in this case. Another major issue with this equation, that it is correct only for sinusoidal excitation. Unfortunately, in power electronics, and PWM converters, uh, the waveform of the excitation of inductors is not sinusoidal. It is uh, more like a square wave as far as the voltage is concerned than a triangular wave as far as the current is concerned. So strictly speaking, this equation is incorrect for this situation, not to mention the fact 
that in the case of a PWM converter, you have also to deal with the variable duty cycle, so it's not even a simple uh, square wave. As I've said, the issue of temperature and frequency dependent is actually dealt with by the manufacturer. This is an example of some data given by a Ferro's cube. And what they are doing here is this is the basic Steinmetz equation. These are the coefficient. And this is a correction for temperature changes. So this is a fitting to the change due to the temperature. It's a second order equation. These coefficients are now a function of the material and also of the frequency range. Also, the coefficients themselves are a function of the frequency range. So here we see, for example, for the 3C30, for this frequency range, we have this uh, factor here, then X and Y are these values. And then we have, for this frequency range, we have the coefficient. Now, in this case, these are pretty close, but for other materials, uh, they are not the same. For example, for the 3C94, uh, for this frequency range, C sub M is this value, and for this range, it's uh, a different value, and the same thing goes for X and Y coefficient. coefficient. However, once you know your operating condition, like the frequency range and the uh, temperature, then, of course, you can do the calculation. So, what was the objective of this study uh, that I'm presenting here? It is to develop a model that can run within the environment of spies, or in particular, P spies we've been working with, but to overcome some of the problems that I have mentioned. For example, the Steinmetz equation is correct only for AC. So we're going to use a modified equation that is also valid for non-sinusoidal excitation. We also mentioned that the DC component cannot be incorporated here because it will result in a big error. You can reduce the error if you subtract the DC from uh, this magnetic flux density value. So this is something that we can do fairly easily. We can subtract uh, from the total uh, magnetic flux density the DC component. Another issue that has to be taken care of if you are building a model for simulation is the fact that the magnetic flux density will be a function of time. That it will be, say, sinusoidal or some other waveform. And of course, here you need the number. That is, you need real numbers here, not values which are changing as a function of time, because the average power is a function of this value, this uh, real number value. So what we can do, and that what has been done, is to use a peak detector for this changing magnetic flux density as a function of time and capturing the peak value as a number which we are then plugging into the equation. So these are the actual modifications that we have done. There is one more extension that I'll explain a little, a little bit later. So how can we approach the problem of non-sinusoidal excitation? It has been shown by Abdallah and Sullivan that you can estimate the power loss of a ferrite core by a modified expression based on the Steinmetz equation. It's called the generalized Steinmetz equation, GSE. It looks a little bit different. However, it uses the same constant as in the original Steinmetz equation. Alpha and beta are the constant. K1 is not the exact constant as in the equation, the original equation, but it is calculated from the constant of the Steinmetz equation. Now, the nice thing about this expression also is that you don't need the, actually the frequency, you just take the derivative of the magnetic flux density and uh, this will suffice. You don't need an exp you, don't need, you don't need the value of the frequency. Now this equation is correct only for ex AC excitation, no DC. In the paper that I've mentioned, we have 
use basically this Abdallah and Sullivan solution, but we have subtracted the TC component from the magnetic flux density. You don't have to do it here because that's a derivative and uh, it'll zero, of course, the DC component. And also implemented this into a SPICE model. So this is what has been done uh, in this paper. Now, rather than handling the derivative of the magnetic flux density, we can exchange it with uh, this expression, of course, and then the magnetic flux density itself is the integral of the voltage across the inductor. So we end up with a sort of modified equation that is based on one measurement, which is the voltage across the inductor. This is the voltage across the inductor, and B is calculated from the voltage across the inductor. So all what we need as an input to this calculation is the voltage across the inductor. And then we have, as I've said, to do some peak detection here because uh, we have to plug here a number, not something which is changing with time. So how good is the model? This is comparing some experimental results to simulation done by the model that I'm presenting here. This is power dissipation, power loss, as a function of duty cycle when the excitation is a square wave voltage. Now the red curve is an experimental values, experimental values that we obtained from another paper. And the square ones here, the brown line here, is what was obtained from simulation by the proposed model. So what we can see is that in the most range of the duty cycle, uh, it's really very good, except for very, very high duty cycle. This is probably because it's such a high duty cycle. There are very high frequency component, which this model that we have developed is not coping with very well. Now, the blue line here is the, just a regular Steinmetz equation output. Here, we cannot include information about the duty cycle, just a frequency, so therefore for any duty cycle, it will be the same value. Another extension that we have incorporated in the model is to represent the losses by a resistor across the inductor. So this is a virtual resistor that consumes the power that is calculated by the equation that I have shown. So this has to be somehow calculated online while the simulation is running. We emulate a resistor by a current source. Here is the inductor. This is a current source which is consuming the current here. And the power this absorbed is equal to the, the power calculated by the modified equation. So how, what's the expression here? So let's have a look at this block diagram which gives the detail. Now the input is the power calculated by the extended Steinmetz equation. Here we have the voltage across the inductor. This is the current which is consumed by this source. Okay, this is actually the output of this block. So we take this current, multiply it by the voltage, and the product is the power consumed by this value. This is the power consumed by this source. Now we compare it to the calculated power, and then we take an integral on this difference. If these are different, then the output here, G, will go up or down, depending on the difference, and it will stop at the point when these two are equal. So G will be a number which represent the case in which P sub C is equal to P sub B, that is the calculated is equal to the actual power consumed here. So this would be this value here, in this particular condition. However, we need here a current which is not constant. This is a constant, it's like DC. We need here a sinusoidal waveform to be in phase sinusoidal or square wave or any other waveform 
that uh, prevails across the inductor. So what we do, we multiply this G, which is a constant, by the voltage of the inductor. By this, we generate a current which has the waveform of the voltage. This is a constant. This is the waveform of the voltage across the inductor. So I will have the same waveform and in phase with this voltage. And this current is the current source that is shown here. In the next section, there is an explanation of the simulation model, and also it shows some test runs of simulation. Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This video is a companion to the paper User-Friendly SPICE Model of Magnetic Core Losses by Dr. Alexander Abramovich and myself. The presentation here covers a description of the basic building blocks of core loss piecewise model proposed in the paper, shows some simulation of small signal and love signal AC simulation of an inductor uh, using performance analysis to look at the data, and then it shows a simulation of a simplified back circuit, and finally, uh, it also shows how the temperature rise, right, the hot spot of the core, can be estimated uh, by simulation and using an experimental uh, equation, which is very popular. The circuit diagram of the inductor simulation is shown here. This is the basic simulated circuit. There is a 50 microhenry inductor uh, driven by a sinusoidal waveform of an amplitude amp, which is defined in the parameters, I'll see, you'll see it in a minute, and then of a frequency frac, also defined in the parameters. So this is the excitation, and connected to this inductor in parallel is this ABM, which emulates a resistor, a pure resistor, which draws or consumes the power, which is equivalent to the core loss. Now, this ABM is a current source, draws the current through here, and the value of this current source is derived by taking the integral of this VP. This is the calculated power loss of the core, and then the product of the voltage across the inductor, this is the voltage across the inductor, times the current of this element. Now, being an integrator, uh, it'll produce a larger and larger voltage as long as these two are non-equal. As this larger output is produced, the current will increase until these two will be actually equal. At this point, this value now is multiplied by the value of the voltage across the inductor to produce a current which has the shape of the same as the inductor voltage. By this, we have a pure resistor which consumes the power calculated here. Let me move now to the definition of the parameters. We are assuming a core uh, E42 slash 42 slash 15 uh, and a material of 3C85. Now the core is assumed to have six turns, volume given here, cross-section area of the core, magnetic length. K1 is a constant calculated from the Steinmetz equation or constant. Uh, it's, of course, related to this particular material. And B and A are the same. Amp is a definition of the parameter of the voltage excitation and frac is the frequency. The magnetic flux density is calculated by this ABM. Well, it is just the integral of the voltage across the inductor divided by number of terms divided by the cross-section section area of the core. So here we have the flux density. And in order to get rid of the DC component, we are interested per the proposed model of the paper. We are interested in an AC component only. Uh, it's a high-pass filter 
which gives us here only the high frequency component. Now, this block actually calculate the power loss in, within the core, according to the proposed model. What it is, is there is a expression here, which is the voltage across the inductor, well, divided by this constant to the power of A, which is the Steinmetz uh, coefficient. Uh, and then, then there is another term here, which is the AC component of the magnetic flux uh, to the power of B minus 3, again, Steinmetz equation. This is now multiplied by K1, another constant. And since this is power per volume, it is multiplied by the volume of the core. So this is actually the circuit diagram of uh, the model. And let's now run some simulations. Okay, we see here now the voltage across the inductor, the current of the inductor. We see the AC component of the uh, flux density, magnetic flux density. And the green one is the calculated power loss. This is the green line here which is calculated to be, say, 1.7 watts. This is in watts here. Now, the red one is the power consumed by this uh, virtual or equivalent resistance that emulates the power loss. Now, the reason for this is because of the average function, which takes a while to settle down. But as we can see, this matches exactly uh, the calculated power level. Let me now run a simulation with some uh, parameter sweep. Okay, we are sweeping now the amplitude of the excitation from uh, 1 volt to 100 volt in steps of uh, 10 volts. Well, here are the results of all the points that were taken. This is not very interesting, so let's have a look at the uh, performance analysis uh, feature, and uh, here it is. What we see is the, again, the voltage across the inductor. And of course, now it's going up because uh, the excitation is going up. We see the AC component of the magnetic flux density. And of course, it's going up. And we also see the power loss, the core power loss, which again is a function of the, uh, of course, BAC, the excitation magnetic flux uh, deviation. Okay, we can have a look now at the log uh, units. And uh, I've left these as they are, but here this is the log. Now it's a straight line. The reason, of course, is that this is a function which is a power function, so therefore in a logarithmic scale, uh, we see it a, a straight line. Let me move now to the simulation of a sort of a Buck converter, it's not a buck, it's just representing a buck converter. This is a pulse a source generator. Uh, and here is the inductor. This is the output section capacitor plus uh, load. And um, this RAC represents the uh, RAC of the inductor. That is the equivalent resistance at operating frequency. Uh, again, we have here the load which is representing the power loss of the core uh, and then we have similarly we have the flux density uh, estimator uh, we have the power loss calculator and we have two extra abm that have been added and let me um, zoom on them this abm calculates the power loss you might say the copper loss uh, of the element by taking i square this is the current through the uh, RAC times RAC. So this is the power loss, uh, copper loss of the element. Uh, this is another low pass filter, so we have an average value here. Now, this ABM now, ABM5, is actually estimating the hotspot temperature by the experimental equation, which takes the uh, power loss or power dissipation divided by the surface area of the element uh, to the power of 0.833. This is the experimental equation uh, suggested by a number of vendors. And um, 
this since this is in supposed to be in milliwatts uh, this is in watts so it's the, the, uh, multiplied by 1000 now here we have two terms we have the average power loss of the core plus the average power loss of our AC which is the AC resistance uh, of the element okay let's uh, now run some simulation here it is what we see here now is this is the voltage across the inductor since it's uh, the circuit is driven by 40 volts uh, duty cycle of half then of course the output is 20 volts so we see here plus minus 20 volt across the inductor this is the inductor current uh, and this is the AC component of the flux density magnetic flux density just the AC component it's been uh, filtered out that this is filtered out per the proposed model in the paper now here we see the power loss going up and down this is per cycle but then we have the average the green one is the average power loss and the blue one is the average uh, power loss of the copper or our AC and the calculated hot spot according to the equation the estimation is about uh, what seven and a half centigrade so this is uh, an example of the things you can do with the proposed model of the paper I thank you very much for your attention I hope you found it interesting and that it will be useful to you in the future thank you